Right then, it's time for us to start getting excited about the Ralph Rangnick era at Manchester United. And it's time for us to now take a look at what his immediate plan will be at the club. What is he going to want to do straight away at Manchester United to solve the problems that we do have? How is he going to implement everything that he wants to implement at the club? That's what I'm going to do in this video, run through the immediate plan for Ralph Ragnick at Manchester United and what he's going to be focusing on straight away. If you do enjoy the video and you do learn something by the end of it, please consider dropping a like on it and subscribing to United People's TV. But let's start talking about the Ralph Ragnick era. And the first thing he's got to do, we know this and it's obvious really, but he's got to sort his coaching staff out because right now that is a question mark. Whether Michael Carrick will stay on. What about Mike Thielen, Kieran McKenna? What about the likes of Richard Hartis or Martin Pert? There are a lot of names still at the club. And of course, there's Lars Konecka, who worked as a video analyst uh, under, I believe, Pep Guardiola. And he worked as an assistant manager at Leipzig under Rangnick. And so did um, Nagelsmann as well. But it looks like Konecka is going to be coming in. And we need to figure out and find out straight away who is on this coaching staff setup. Because in my opinion, I've said this before, I don't really understand how Mike Phelan has a role inside there. I can understand, even if I didn't completely agree with it, I could understand if uh, United and Rangnick saw some sort of possibility for Carrick and McKenna, the younger coaches that could work underneath Rangnick and probably go on to improve. But the likes of, as I say, Mike Phelan, who's experienced and done and is sort of like, you know, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. I don't think so anyway. And I'd just be surprised if feeling was kept on. But choosing his coaching staff and getting that sorted immediately has to be the first priority for Ralph Rannick because that's what's going to be making the changes and bringing them in straight away. And speaking about change, that is where it really kicks in because once that coaching staff is sorted, it's all about how Rangnick is going to help revolutionise Manchester United. And that's going to come with some serious training ground changes now this uh from james ducker from the telegraph was it yesterday a few days ago actually caught my eye at the time and also goes to really show how big and widespread the change is going to be this article is all about how he could introduce a clout a countdown clock to manchester united's training ground if we scroll through and that what that clock is it's to do with the pressing game uh the german manager is expected to focus uh on the transition to a high intensity pressing game and has already been given access to past training sessions. And he talks about the countdown clock. If you go down here, this is what Ragnick had to say about it himself. We've had a countdown clock uh, custom made for us. The assistant coach activates it and it starts ticking. We use it for a game called the eight second rule. The players can hear the ticking and they know that they have to get the ball back within eight seconds. Or if they have possession, they need to take a shot on goal within 10 seconds. The ticking can be irritating for them at first. But what we've noticed is this type of training can affect players within weeks. They adjust their start of play and it becomes an instinct. That bit there, really, really exciting about players getting new instincts, new habits. And these new training methods will help to revolutionise Manchester United because ultimately we know what it's all geared towards. And it is all geared towards Randnick being able to implement his pressing system at Manchester United. That is ultimately the biggest change that he's going to do in terms of the football on the pitch. But it's really going to come down to these training sessions, to how Manchester United train, to how the methods are different to what they were under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and how his methods are going to help bring new habits into this team. Because we all know full well that this uh, Manchester United squad is more than, uh, it's, it's more than, uh, than capable of challenging on paper. It's a top quality squad. Really, really it is. But if you're, looking at, um, if you're looking at how difficult it is for Ralph to do this job, then all you've got to do is take a look at this. And you take a look at the stats here. It compares the pressing stats, tackles, successful pressures, everything of Ragnick's team in 2018-19 compared to Manchester United this season. And look at the numbers, man. Look at the numbers. Top of everything apart from pressures in the final third, Leipzig were. And United are pretty much bottom of everything this year. Tackles, successful pressures, interceptions, recoveries. Now, of course, that might have slightly changed after the Chelsea game because I think we had six pressures in the final third, actually, and won the ball back six times. Fred doing it three times. 
But it goes to show how big a job Rangnick has with these changes he's going to implement in training and how that's going to translate into a new style of football for Manchester United. That's what we're all excited about seeing on the pitch. Off the pitch, there's a huge amount of work that Rangnick has to do. But in terms of changing that, that there is such a thing. It's not as if uh, he's trying to take Manchester United from being like the third or fourth best pressing team in the Premier League and making them the best. He's taken a team which just is not used to, just does not press as a team, as a collective unit, and, and changing their mindset. The players are going to hate training. I tell you what, it's going to be like going back to school and doing the bleep test. You know that? Jeez, I don't think they do that anymore, do they? But that's, that's kind of what it's going to feel like a mid, a mid pre-season because Rangnick's going to come in straight away and he's not going to waste any time. And I'm excited to see what that does. So in, in, in the same sense that he's, he's got to come in and choose that coaching staff, he's got to come in and implement these new training methods. It's all geared towards getting the players playing inside that gig and pressing system, that high pressing system. The eight second rule, win the ball back within eight seconds. If you've got the ball, create a chance within 10 seconds, a countdown clock. It's going to be, I don't know how to describe it, militaristic, I suppose you can call it that. It's going to be very, very disciplined compared to Manchester United's previous training sessions, which clearly did not work underneath Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, Kieran McKenna and Michael Carrick, because the same problems repeated themselves over and over again. That won't be the case with Ralph Ragnick. If we go down here and we now take a look at what else he's going to bring to Manchester United, it's all about hand-picked experts, tactical flexibility and no outcasts. How Rangnick will improve Manchester United. This is an article from Stefan Bienkowski on The Telegraph and I, I enjoyed it because there's comments here from, who was it, Andreas Beck, who played under Ragnick for three years and became his captain at Hoffenheim. This will really give us a bit of insight into exactly what we can expect to see from Ralph Ragnick. He loves players that can sprint on and off the ball, but if you have quality players like Ronaldo, then you have to use them and adapt your tactics. I think he will do that. I don't know what his master plan is, but if he, if, if he has those kind of players, then I think he will find a compromise to make use of players like Ronaldo and be as successful as he can be with the players right now. And this is definitely going to be one of the big talking points about Ralph Ragnick. How does he get the most out of this man, Cristiano Ronaldo? What is the way that Rangnick is going to coach Ronaldo inside that pressing system? Because if we're being honest, it's not really Ronaldo's natural style of play. But it's not to say that Ronaldo can't work inside it. Because uh, I think I compared it to when Michael Carrick played in defensive midfield for Manchester United. started to drop deeper and deeper in his career. Um, he didn't necessarily operate like Fred as a disruptor. Someone who would sort of like run towards the player and try and win the ball at their feet. Michael Carrick would intercept the passing lanes. He'd, t he'd, he'd be thinking a step ahead. So you wouldn't have to do that energetic pressing on the player. Instead, you would simply just operate the space where they're going to try and pass or run into. And I think Ronaldo can probably operate in a similar sort of way in this pressing sort of style for Randick. Look, I'm just, I'm, I'm just speaking out loud here. I have no idea really how he's going to do it. And it's probably the biggest question, tactical question, about the individuals inside that squad. Uh, if we go down here and we look a bit more about what he was saying, Beck was saying... From day one, it was intense. He has a clear idea of his football style and he's highly intelligent. That's when you, you notice that when you speak to him. Uh, we go down here a bit more. Uh, when you get Ragnick, you don't only get the coach. You get so much more. They may not see it in the first few days, weeks or months, but Manchester United will eventually see the benefits of bringing him to the club. He was only at Hoffenheim for a few years, but what he left behind is something that the club still profits from today. That's exciting. That's really exciting for Manchester United. But if we're looking here and we're looking at the coaching staff that he's got to decide on, we're looking here and we're looking about the, the training method changes that he's going to do. And we're having a look about how this pressing system has to come in for sure. And we, spit, we, we go down here and we have a little conversation about Cristiano Ronaldo. Tactically, that's probably the biggest question mark he's got there. For sure, he has to do that. But it's not just Cristiano Ronaldo, in my opinion. And Ralph Hasenhutl, who worked underneath Rangnick at Leipzig. He was the manager that was brought in after Leipzig got promoted to the Bundesliga. Uh, so he knows about working underneath him. And he says, I know him very well and how he works. He will turn every stone at Manchester United. He does not like having any weaknesses in the club. But half a year is not so long to turn things around. Uh, I mean, he may have six months as a manager, but he will be in the club for longer than that. And this is the big thing about what he needs to do, because it's not just about Cristiano Ronaldo, is it? 
we go here and we take a look at Manchester United's squad. And it's a big squad. Four goalkeepers. You've got Lindelof by Jones, Maguire, Baran, the lot, Shaw, Tellez, Wambasaka, Williams, Twanzebe, and Mengi, obviously on loan. Paul Pogba, why matter? Jesse Lingard, Pereira, Ahmad, Fred, Bruno, Pelistri on loan. Matic, Van der Beek, Garner, McTominay, Hannibal. And a front selection there of Ronaldo Martial, Rashford, Greenwood, Cavani, Sancho, Ilanga Chong, and Shaw Atiro. Yeah, he does have to sort this Ronaldo situation. This is a situation that definitely is probably one of the most prevalent and most important things that he's got. But as Ralph Hasenhut will describe there, he does not like having weaknesses at the club. And that's why he's got to find out these weaknesses straight away. And I'm guessing he'll know pretty soon because he strikes me as a manager that will very much do that. But it, the, These players are either going to work with him and work with him straight away or they're going to get pushed to the side and they're going to get frozen out. Now, we don't know who's going to fall on what side of the fence right now. We can make our, our assumptions. I would absolutely expect Fred, for example, to be a player who really sort of shines underneath him. I expect Donny van der Beek to be a player who really shines inside that system. And he started shining now, but I really do expect Jadon Sancho to shine as well. They're the three players that I would choose, probably out of that squad, that I would choose to really, really shine. But what happens with uh, Anthony Martial's sort of pressing game or lack thereof? Will that really suit his style? Rashford definitely will suit it. So will Mason Greenwood. But there are definite question marks. And he has to weed out the players that he can't trust inside this squad and do it quickly for him to have any sort of real proper success at Manchester United. There's going to be no, there's no passengers anymore. There's going to be no... Um, look, everyone's going to get a, a, level, a level playing field here, right? So even if you know people have had bad seasons so far... X, Y, Z, and there's preconceptions. I don't think uh, Rangnick will have too many preconceptions. He'll come in and everybody will get a fair opportunity, but they'll have to take it quickly. There'll be no players now who are afforded, if you're playing crap, for example, for a few weeks, I'm sure that they'll, they'll get dropped. There'll be no loyalties, no agendas, no anything. He's coming into the squad fresh, and that fresh set of eyes is going to be really important for making sure that when he, go, when he goes through this list of squad players, who he chooses to trust. Because Solskjaer definitely got that wrong with trusting the likes of Maguire and Shaw and Fred and McTominay and sticking with them far too often. But for me, looking at what's exciting about coming next, it, it is effectively going to be a bit of a revolution. In terms of the training ground, the training ground is going to be changed completely from the coaching staff and who he decides to bring in there to the methods of the training that he brings in. It's going to be a completely different training ground now. Every single day, the training exercises are going to be different. The intensity of the training is going to be different. And the coaching staff should and hopefully will be different as well. And it, it's necessary if we're going to get a system like this in. That's such a, a, an intense system to play. We know that. Like you, you saw it at Jurgen Klopp probably in the first season of Liverpool and the burnout they had towards the end. And maybe something they've suffered from at various points since. This Manchester United team will not be fit enough right now to play that system. So it's going to be down to the training and getting that in immediately. And then we have a look at Ronaldo and how he's going to solve that problem. I don't know about the Ronaldo one, but the weaknesses, he's got to get rid of the weaknesses as well. And that means looking at that squad, looking at the players and seeing who he can trust. But how excited are you about this Rangnick era that's, kind of, that's going to come into Manchester United? It's going to be... So different. I can't wait. I can't wait to see the differences it brings to this football we play, to the system that he implements, who fits it, who doesn't fit it. There's lots of questions and I'm sure there'll be answers very, very soon because he's not going to be a manager that wastes any time. It won't be like three, four weeks before we start to see how the system comes in. It's going to be immediate, straight away, whether that's Arsenal or whether that's Crystal Palace. We don't know that much yet. But let me know what you think about this in the comments below. How excited are you about Randnick and how... Do you think this era is going to pan out? This era, if you want to call it that, for like six months into the season, but he's moving upstairs for two years. He's going to be here for a lot longer. I'm dead excited. I know you know I am. You let me know what you think in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe to United People's TV. If you do, have the right